Okay, we are ready for turn number two, and you can see that I've got these cool little disc thingies made. Uh, you just flip them over, and the turn progression is is on these little discs. I, and the reason I'm using those little discs, by the way, is because those are the same discs that are being used um, for markers in the game, because a specific reason is that the bases are round, and it was cool to see these markers fit right underneath um, the uh, the bases of the mechs. Uh, and wherever possible, those round inch and a half uh, acrylic discs are going to be used. Um, one of the things that came up uh, that we forgot to mention, and as a matter of fact, uh, didn't even bother doing it uh, at... Uh, the game convention because it didn't uh, come up. I mean, it wasn't an issue, uh, but it needs to be um, stated um, when a vehicle is reduced in in weight class. Uh, it needs to have a, a way of. We need to have a way of showing it, and one of the options was. Uh, um, kind of a marker or another kind of a marker or uh, the uh, use of a straw, which is an interesting idea to put on the post. It's an interesting uh, concept because in a sense, uh, using this post to put a piece of straw on uh, indicates a reduction in class uh, weight class. Uh, because we've got so many markers, that even though we've tried to reduce as many as possible, uh, it, it's helpful to show that reduction by using a straw. Uh, and, and of course, straws can be different colors for different inks. Uh, for instance, a, a yellow would be a reduction of one, a blue would be a reduction of two, something of that nature, and red would be you know, a reduction of three. Um, and it should also, well... Uh, it's it's clear that say for instance you had a light mech and had a weight reduction of one uh, so you put the hypothetically you put the straw on the post and uh, that now becomes a very light mech uh, if it suffers another series of defense hits and then suffer and then goes down to a very light I'm sorry it then goes down to nothing uh, it has no armor left and all the hits will affect uh well actually uh, a, a way to cut to the chase is that you could say uh instead of recording all the damage after a mech has no armor it simply is destroyed so when a mech gets to the point of having no armor left it's essentially a, a destroyed mech so in the campaign concepts um, if you get down to the point of a very light status uh, you need to you know, leave. <laughs> you need to think about, you know, what's going on or seek cover or something. Um, we could also say it like this. You can lose all your armor and still be alive, but if you get hit again with anything uh, when you have no armor, then you will be destroyed. So let's let's put it that way. As a matter of fact, I think what I just said is the way it's actually written in the rules. So, okay, turn number two. The uh, the blue tan troop and this the group, we'll call them blue tan, and these guys are going to be green blue or something. Um, have got the initiative, and they're going to be uh, activating now. So, in the process of the turn. Uh, the way it works is that you, uh, of course, go through all the administration of, you know, picking up stuff from last turn and everything. Uh, but the eventually, uh, you will get to the point of issuing orders, and issuing those orders for us here in this these continual demos. Seems like you can never have enough demos, uh, as long as you do it correctly and don't screw up like I did the other day. Because I was like, where the hell did that come from? So I had to redo that one uh, because I misinterpreted something. And these misinterpretations happen. So uh, this shows that, by the way, 
the objective uh, was taken by the the green blue team, which is now player B, by the way, and player A. Okay, so they're going to issue their orders, and essentially the Marauder, it does have a shot, and uh, it will be shooting to this location. By the way, let's mention again, this guy's crouching. That's what the little marker means underneath. You can't see it, but he's crouching. He's getting as low as he possibly can. Uh, this is going to be ordered to move, and this is going to be ordered to move. And remember, you always can fire uh, before you move and as well. Uh, the opponent is going to mark orders, and he's going to order uh, no movement uh, because he's going to uh, try and uh, uh, take as many benefits as possible. And in this case, uh, if 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 any uh, uh, target or firer uh, moves in the time uh, in the turn, they get the move or they get the combat penalty. So, uh, which, by the way, uh, I, does, I don't think it applies to missiles and rockets. I think uh, firing missiles, uh, uh, firing rockets to a moving target, I think it does, it does count. Yeah, obviously, right? Because it, it's not moving. It's just sitting there. So these guys are going to not move. And uh, what would be the benefit? Well... Uh, there is no benefit, except, uh, this is interesting, I never thought about mentioning this before, but there will always be a combat penalty whether they move or not. Mm -hmm. Now, it might be different in X Command Mechanized in the World War II era, uh, because vehicles aren't designed to be able to fire uh, while moving, the, uh, the, the, it's way too uh, uh, unlikely that you'll hit the target unless you're very close uh, while you're moving. We saw that in Fury. Uh, so, although, you know, that movie has issues like all movies do, uh, they did some, some justice to the capability of the vehicles involved. Okay, so, not moving, not moving. So, they will have a chance to fire before our uh, tan blue, blue tan uh, team uh, moves because these guys are on Overwatch. They're going to say, oh, hold on, I'm firing first, even though he's got activation, right? Now, there's another point to be made here about that because players have said, well, then what's the point of activation? The answer is activation just means you get to go first. You get to move first. Combat is a little different because of the fact that a, a non-moving item always has an advantage over something moving. Well, these guys are moving, right? And as a matter of fact, they move last turn. So you could say we should have that marker out here. We don't do it, right? Another thing we don't do. We should have the marker out here that says that is a moving thing. And that is a moving thing. At the end of the turn, it is moving. It's not stationary. That's why those markers are picked up at the beginning of the turn. Or... Uh, they are left at the, the they they are put, well you can pick them up and put them back down again because you're continuing to move that's technically the way it should be done so that we know yeah it's a moving target so when we look at our targeting by the way uh, this is blocked so there can't be any combat it, you could say uh, he could possibly do it. no but. Uh, because of there being a space between this object, if you will, this one, and where the Jenner is now, it's actually capable of being hit by the rockets of the Valkyrie. And the same can be said of the, uh, the uh, I think it's a PPC, I forget what the weapon is on the Valkyrie, uh, firing to the... Uh, uh, Marauder. By the way, what is that? It's a medium laser. It's an LRM-10. Um, so he's going to take his little medium laser. Clearly, the Valkyrie's outclassed. 
Okay, he he's outclassed. He got that objective, but boy, he needs to run away. But he's instead just gonna. I'm crouching down. He's uh, just gonna. He's gonna fire. Um, he'll take all his weapons actually right here. So instead of like I just mentioned, you know, indirect fire there. So instead, he's gonna take them all right here. Um, uh, it's also interesting to note that uh, we could have said, and 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 players would note that uh stand by for a second let me just do some uh when we were playing on a large table things are different here's an example you could do this if you're playing on such a this is a four by three table if you were, um, if you wanted to, you could cut down the ranges uh, when you cut down the table size. So, for instance, I think this is, is this 10 hexes? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, technically speaking. Alexa, what is 11 times 2.5? 27 okay that's too far so let's just go to 10 and call it uh, 25 inches right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 yeah all right so what I was saying was this is essentially the the length and that's a good thing for having these kind of pointers by the way um, so this is the uh, 25 inches these hexes are 2.5. There's 10 of them. That's 25 inches. So call it 24. Um, this would be the extreme range of all weapons in the game. You could say that's it. Um, and anything in the half range mark uh, gets a, a bonus, right? Because uh, uh, it, it's assumed, and that's the other interesting thing, by the way. I should mention that. It's assumed the closer something is, the more powerful the weapon is. I'm not entirely sure if I believe that anymore, because in the future era, the weapon is what it is unless it's an energy weapon. See, energy will dissipate. Now, is it going to dissipate that much? Well, that's a good question, right? Maybe it's enough to say that it'll dissipate anything beyond this. But in this range right here, this is the effective range of the weapon. Okay, this is it. Anything beyond that, and that energy is going to be dissipating, be it laser, pulse laser, particle projection, cannon, anything. So that's what we'll do, and so we understand what we're doing here. Uh, okay, so that enough said. This will be the range. And this stupid little thing is starting to annoy me. I'm getting rid of it. It's nice to have it, but I don't really use it. Oh, I didn't notice. I have not turned on my... Uh... Okay. Okay. My uh, top camera, all right, my little GoPro. Isn't that nice? It immediately hooks in. Uh, it's HDMI wired. Okay, combat, got it. So uh, direct fire uh, rockets. Let's make sure we don't jump ahead. Um, here's the other issue, right? Other thing, firing before moving, right? But let's just do this first, him firing there. So medium laser. Uh, if it was a light laser, it would get two shots. But it's a medium laser. So it needs to roll to hit. And we're looking at one, two, three, four, automatic. One, two, three, four, code. I'm sorry, color. Any other mods? Moving target. That's it. 
So uh, that goes from color to code. One shot. And you got it. Now, here's the question. Hit location. Now, I should stop here and, and mention this. It has been discussed that no other damage is possible. Oh, and by the way, that was a medium laser shot. If I had rolled the uh, system management damage, then it would have affected system management without any question. Um, there has been a discussion as to whether or not any damage at all should happen to a mech or a vehicle uh, while it has armor. And that's a, let's put it this way. If you're hitting armor all day long, then that's the only thing that's ever going to be affected. You're just going to hit armor, 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 armor. Nothing else gets affected on the mech. And is that the way it is in uh, Battletech proper? Uh, not entirely, because they have critical hits, possibility. Okay. Uh, but we don't, that's too much detail. So what we're playing here is a simplified version. Uh, well, it's not even a version, really. It just uses the mechs, and there's some crossover between Battletech, Cav, and so on. But after you know some time, you'll see that there's not that much the same. Um, so do you have damage to the mech uh, while it has armor? And one camp says, sure, because it moves the game along. The other camp says, no, just keep rolling hits to armor until special hits are caused. So in other words, like right now, do I roll for a special hit? In other words, is there a chance um, the medium to heavy? Uh, oh, oh, how do you like that? I just answered another question. This is medium weapon firing to a heavy um, class. So I need to roll a special hit anyway to make that hit count. And that's always code. Red. Got it. Okay. So he did get the hit after all. So the question is, um, do we affect uh, nothing other than armor all the time? And then once the mech is reduced in weight class, then it suffers uh, the hits. You could say that. In other words, record the hits on the mech, but don't um, take them into consideration until the mech is reduced one in weight class. That is an idea. But we will play this game the way it's designed so far and say that uh, we'll just roll for where the damage occurs. So, as usual, uh, combat, movement, or uh, defense. And it's only one hit, so. And it's a system management hit. You see, that's why we're here. So, eight-sided die, system management hit. On the Marauder. Not so tough after all, eh? Five. Shutdown. That mech is on a shutdown timer. How do you like that? And the number of turns is six turns. I'm sorry, 1d6. It could be very short or it could be long. So something happened. And that guy went to a shutdown. That's fascinating. Uh, for one turn. So I'm not even going to bother putting out the marker. Let's leave the dice there. So our Valkyrie, who is crouching down around the walls of that bridge, has scored a system management hit uh, on that uh, Marauder. That's pretty cool. That doesn't happen very often. Um, okay, so that is an example uh, of a outclassed mech firing and doing damage to a heavy mech. Uh, that's encouraging. But again, with the questions I've posed, 
uh, you can decide how you want to how you want to play the game. We're playing it the traditional way, the way it's written. You just roll to see what damage is caused. But as I said, and this is kind of a summary. If you want to play it the way that uh, you can only suffer the damage that's been accumulated after it's been reduced in one weight class, then you roll, uh, or that, then then all those hits come into uh, account. Except, right? Except when it's a system hit, because that's an energy beam weapon. So he has fired, uh, and because that has happened, we need to mark that so we don't forget. And, oh, by the way, he didn't fire his... Uh, he didn't fire his rockets. Um, so we'll do them. Uh, there's 10 of them. I'm going to roll to see if it's a quarter, a half, or three quarter. Uh, that's drunk. Quarter, drunk again. I can't believe it. Three drunks in a row. Okay, so half. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, red is three quarter. Um, sorry. That's a quarter. That's a half. <laughs> and this star is a three quarter. So we rolled this, which is half. So five rockets hit, but they are light class, hitting a heavy target. We must roll special. Special. Five hits. Each looking for red. None. I'm sorry. I should have specified. Not star. But uh, stars don't count. It needs to be code. And all of those did not. They hit, but they did not do damage. So that's interesting. All right. So there's our blue marker on our Valkyrie. And we'll come back.